real gases in Dalton's law. So for real gases, kinetic molecular theory fails, and it's because volume of individual particles is not approximately zero, and particles do exert forces on each other. Because for ideal gas, the particles are not supposed to exert forces on each other, and there should not be any force of attractions between each other. And the volume of individual gas particles is supposed to be zero, or approximately zero, but for real gases, that does not apply. So kinetic molecular theory fails at low temperatures because at low temperatures, particles move slowly and there will be more LDF as they attract each other when they get close. If attractive forces are present, the particles will clump and volume will be smaller. And also, KMT fails at high pressures because at high pressures, gas particles will be closer together, so volume would not be negligible. So as they will get closer to each other, like this, you will actually be able to measure the approximate volume of the actual gas particles because for ideal gases, they should have the volume negligible because they are so far apart that you can only measure the volume of space, not the actual particles. Next is the Dalton's law. So Dalton proposed that the total pressure equals the individual pressures of each gas in a mixture. And it depends on the number of moles, not the mass. You have an example here. 100.8 grams of O2 and 289.8 8 grams of N2 are in a 6.00 liter tank kept at 20 degrees Celsius. What are the partial pressures of each gas and the total pressure? And in here, it gives you the mass for each gases and volume temperature. So you might realize that you have to use the ideal gas law in this situation. To find the pressure. So first you have to convert the masses into the moles. So first for oxygen, in order to find the moles, you have to divide the grams by its molar mass, which gives you 3.15 moles oxygen. And you now have to use the ideal gas law. So in order to find the pressure, you have to do nRT over V, which equals 3.15 moles times R. We are calculating for the pressure in ATM. So you are using the R value for ATM times 293, the temperature in Kelvin, divided by the volume which is 6.00 liters. Then you get 12.6 atm oxygen. Now you have to find the partial pressure for nitrogen. And first you have to find the moles. By dividing the mass by the molar mass, 28 grams per mole, which equals 10.34 moles. Now you have to use ideal gas law. So partial pressure for nitrogen equals nRT over V. 10.34 moles times R value for ATM. And then 293 temperature. And then 6.00 liters, which equals 41.5 atm nitrogen. So you found the partial pressure of each gas, and then for total pressure, you simply have to add these two partial pressures, which gives you the total pressure of 54.1 atm. We have another example. It says 2.0 mole H2 
and 3.0 mol O2 are added to a 15.0 liter cylinder. Reaction goes to completion. What are the partial pressures of each gas after the completion of reaction? And temperature dropped to 31 degrees Celsius. So in this case, first you write the equation. So 2H2 plus O2 becomes 2H2O, which is the reaction for water synthesis. And you are supposed to make a ice chart for this initial change in equilibrium. So initially you have 2.0 moles of hydrogen, 3.0 moles of oxygen, and none of the water. And for change, it will be negative 2x for hydrogen because you have the coefficient of 2 and it is a reactant which is decreasing. And it will be negative x because it has the coefficient of 1. And plus 2x because water is getting produced. So at equilibrium, the value for hydrogen will be 2 minus 2x. And for water, it will be 3 minus x and hydrogen will be just 2x and it says that reaction goes to completion so it means that reaction will proceed until the limiting reactant is depleted and in order to find the limiting reactant you have to look at the coefficient and the initial so you can know that limiting reactant is hydrogen because it has a smaller initial amount and it decreases at a faster rate because it has the coefficient of 2. So at equilibrium, H2, the amount of H2 will be 0 moles because it will be depleted. Because you know that 2 minus 2x equals 0, you now know that x equals 1.0. Therefore, at equilibrium, the number of moles for oxygen will be 3 minus 1.0, which will be 2.0 moles. And for water, it will be 2.0 moles as well. So in order to find the partial pressures for each gas after completion, and the temperature dropped to 31 Celsius, mm -hmm. you have to use the ideal gas law. So first for the oxygen, we are skipping the hydrogen because there's none of the hydrogen left at equilibrium. So for oxygen, pressure equals nRT over V. You have two moles, and we are using the R value for ATM times 31 degrees plus 273, which gives you 304 Kelvin over the volume, which is 15.0 liters given here, which gives the pressure of 3.3 atm. We have two sig figs here because the question gave you two sig figs. Next is for the water. You are using the ideal gas law as well. So nRT over V. You have 2.0 moles and R value over volume. And because you had the same number of moles, you also have the partial pressure, same as oxygen, which is 3.3 atm.